All right, this is problem 410 on page 133. The hub of the wheel can be attached to the axle either with negative offset, which is the picture on the left, or with positive offset on the right. If the tire is subjected to both a normal and radial load as shown, determine the resultant moment of these loads about 0 .0 on the axle for both cases. So the larger the moment, the worse things are going to be for the wheel. So just from intuition, how many people think that the case on the left is better? Just looking at the picture. How many people think that the case on the right is better? One, two people? Okay. So either you're not looking at the picture or you don't have an opinion, you're not sure. But we can find out. what Really what they should have asked is, which configuration minimizes the moment on the wheel? So this is 410. And I can't draw the picture as beautifully as they did, but let me make a sketch of the tire in cross section. So there's the upper part of the tire. We're going to revolve it around. There's the lower tire. The axis of rotation is right here. The wheel that they've drawn is a nice detailed wheel. Here's my best rendition of a wheel. And also my reason for not being an artist amongst many. Okay. So the wheel is attached at point O. What we're interested in is the magnitude of the moment of two forces. Well, apparently this car is going around at a curve because there's an 800 Newton force this way, and there is a 4 kilonewton load this way. So this load supports the weight of the vehicle. This load is the lateral acceleration, the fact that the car is going about around a corner. Okay, so the question is, what's the moment of these two forces about this axis, or about O? Really, it's about O. Okay. This is a two-dimensional problem, isn't it? So let me ask you a question. Which one causes a larger moment? Just looking at the numbers, what do you think? Four kilonewtons. You think the four kilonewtons, but it's not really a fair question, because the magnitude of the force alone doesn't determine the moment. It's the force times distance. What moment arm does the four kilonewton force have? The moment arm of the 4 kilonewton force is only 0.05 meters. Okay. Whereas the moment arm of the 800 newton force is the radius of the wheel at 0.4 meters. So basically 10 times, right? So this force has a 10 times moment arm to this force, roughly. Right? It's an order of magnitude difference. The other case, the other way to mount this wheel, by the way, the, the, the hub and everything is over here, the axle is over here. The other way to mount this wheel is to turn it around on the hub so that the wheel is mounted out here, O is here, and the tire is more inboard rather than outboard. Okay. So now the force on the tire, the vertical 4 kilonewton force, has a moment arm that's the same, but now it's on the opposite side of O. And the 800 newton load still has the same 0 0.4 meter moment arm. Okay. So we'd like to calculate the moment in case one about O. In fact, you know what? I wish I'd put this over just a little bit. Oh well. Let's see what? Uh, no, we'll stick with black. So case one. We want the moment in case one about O. How would we calculate it? Let me move this down a bit. Otherwise, I'll run out of space. Well, let's see. We could make this into vectors. We could take cross products if we wanted to. But the cross products are always going to be either out of the board or into the board, won't they? So let's just work this as a two-dimensional problem for the time being. We'll work a vector problem a little later with a, a strict vector cross product. Okay. Does the 4 kilonewton load cause a clockwise or counterclockwise moment about O? Be careful. Here's the moment arm. 
Would it tend to cause rotation clockwise about 0.0 or counterclockwise? Well, it's to the left of O, isn't it? And it acts upward. Yes. So that would be clockwise. Is that positive or negative? We're going to take counterclockwise as positive. Okay? This is common terminology you'll see me use quite a bit. So the moment of the 4 kilonewton load is negative. But that's not the only force that causes a moment. The 800 newton load causes a moment about O. The direction of the force is this way, so if you're struggling with what direction of moment it causes, just imagine a string connected from O to the vector and let the vector start rotating, constrained by the string in the direction it wants to go. Is that clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise. Positive or negative? Positive. 0.8 kilonewtons, you'll notice that I convert units on the fly often. You gotta get used to this. 800 newtons is 0.8 kilonewtons. It's easy. One, two, three. Just move the decimal place over three, and you got a, you know, a, a different prefix. So 0.8 kilonewtons. What's the moment arm for that 8 kilon or 0.8 kilonewton force? Four meters. One, four meters. Notice how one of these moments is negative, the other is positive. <clears throat> so really, it's the difference between the two. That comes out to 0.12 kilonewton meters. Now this is not a negative sign, it's a multiplication sign. It's kilonewtons times meters. If that feels uncomfortable, have you, how many people have used a torque wrench for anything before? A few of you? What was it measured in? I didn't tell me. Foot pounds. Foot pounds? Newton meters? Either one? Because that's a valid unit. Somebody said it didn't tell me. What's the purpose of a torque wrench that doesn't tell you? <laughs> Use this. Where's the setting? Right there. Okay. Hope it's calibrated. What about case two? We want the moment for case two about O. Help me write this one out. I wrote the last one out for you. The moment of the four kilonewton force. Clockwise, counterclockwise. Therefore, positive or negative? Positive. positive. Magnitude? Four kilonewtons times 0.05 meters. What's the moment of the 800 Newton force? Positive or negative? It's also positive, isn't it? Magnitude? Times? Good. See how they're adding together this time instead of subtracting? As a matter of fact, that number comes out to 0.52 kilonewton meters. So why on earth? The big trucks have a map mounted like this. You ever notice that? Big trucks are usually opposite. Of course, I guess if you look, it depends on which wheel set you look at, because some of them have them face to face, right? Where the tires are mounted outward. Well, you might go in the other direction. You might turn in the other direction, right? So the, the wheel actually has to resist both left and right frictional loads because you might accelerate the vehicle to the right or to the left. We'll learn about that in dynamics. But this, this force here, this 800 Newton force, could simply flip. It could be in the other direction. So it doesn't really matter which way you, well, if one wheel is designed to take more of the load and going around a corner in one direction, then yes, it matters. Okay? If, they, if both front wheels take, or both back wheels, whatever happens to be taking force to go around the corner, then it, around both corners, then it really doesn't matter. Okay? Any questions about this? Any comments? Why not just have it in the middle? Good question. That was my question. Why not just have it in the middle? That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. However, I think wheels are almost centered, but it's not perfectly centered. Here's my question. Well, this is not really much of a thing anymore. You guys ever uh, see the cars where they take the wheels and they stick them way out so they'll add spacers? Mm -hmm. To me, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen because now you're increasing the moment on all of it. And, I mean, I guess if you want your car to look like an RC car, why not? But <laughs> What about when they have slants in Yeah, a lot of toe. There's actually a reason for toe in. If you notice, BMW is toe in the rear wheels quite a bit. Why? There's actually an advantage when you're going around corners with toe in. Also, there's also an advantage to, and toe actually refers also to the front wheels and how your front wheels aren't parallel when you're going forward. They're actually angled in just a little bit. So there's different directions that the wheels can be angled for various reasons. That actually gets into vehicle dynamics, which is a great 
class to take if you're interested. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't offer it. Yeah, no, like, I've been trying to figure out how to make an elective because when I was on main campus in the mechanical engineering program, the, the professor that taught dynamics, or was it? No, actually, it was a different professor. But anyway, um, there was a class on vehicle dynamics, and I just never had the chance to take it. So my excuse for learning that is to offer it as an elective to you guys, so i got to figure it out. Too. There's a lot of interesting questions about that. Uh, there's a... Uh, we're pretty much out of time, and I know I owe you five minutes, but um, there's actually a three-wheeled bike called a trike that I would like to get. Unfortunately, they're very expensive. And check this out. Speaking of vehicle <laughs> dynamics, look at how these things turn. Oh, oh kind of cool, huh? I forgot to shut off the recording.